Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to get ready on camera and I'm going to tell you two stories. One about a tornado and one about my motorcycle accident at the end. I'm not going to be talking about the products I am using on my face, however I will list everything down below so if you're curious it will be there but if you want to hear some scary stories and see how I created this look just keep watching so I'm gonna start this off by kind of setting the tone of where how old all of that so I was 18 and living in South Carolina at the time this is where I actually met my best friend she's the one that I've been best friends with the longest I have known her since I was 18 actually no I think I was 17 about to turn 18 Either way, like right as I turned 18, we worked together. I remember meeting her and thinking, uh, yeah, we're not gonna be friends because I was in all black and she had this little pink bow in her hair. She had a pink striped shirt on, she had pink sandals on, and this is why you don't judge people because you never know. And we've been friends for this long. Like we always are communicating. I feel like that's how you know if you have a best friend or not, is if they move or you move and you still keep in contact. You're not just like, oh, once a year we talk. Like, no, we always talk. We always send each other like little packages and stuff. I'm going to insert a picture of her. So this is, I don't know, this was a while ago when I first started wearing makeup and my brows were crazy. Uh, <laughs> so this is her and I, I believe this was when I went to see her in Charleston right before she left because she is now, she was in Japan and now she is in Hawaii. But I really only consider myself to have two best friends, it's either Becca or Kelsey. So if I'm ever talking about my best friend, it's usually one of those two. If it's makeup, it's Kelsey. As I was saying, I just had surgery at this point. I had had the surgery that actually messed up my right knee. <laughs> if you stick around with this channel, you're gonna get used to me having surgery because that's just what I do. At this point, I have had 18 surgeries. So just had surgery, I had an immobilizer on my knee. If you're not aware of what that is, it's a huge brace. It basically went from my hip to my ankle. And I was staying with someone I call my mama in South Carolina. She was helping take care of me. Becca always came to visit me, always. On this particular day, she was over and I wanted to go for a walk. Why do I wanna go for a walk when I have a huge immobilizer on? I don't know. At that particular time, it was sunny outside. When this whole thing started, it was sunny. And we knew it was going to storm, but it was supposed to be several hours later. At this time, there was I couldn't see any storm clouds, nothing. The walk I wanted to go on was just like basically around the block. You could just make one big square and it would come back. Granted, it would take me a while to make this walk because of my gimp leg. <laughs> But it was just nice to get out. You know, sometimes if you have surgery, I'm sure you know, just getting out is nice. We start this venture, and for the first half, I'm telling you, it was beautiful. So sunny, so warm, gorgeous outside, and then all of a sudden, it started to get a little dark. But we were already halfway around, so there was no option of just like turning around. It would have taken the same amount of time. I can't go too fast, but I did try to just go a little faster. All of a sudden, it is pitch black outside so dark and then the wind starts picking up and I get a little scared not bad but you know I'm just like oh I don't you know I don't want to be out in a storm and I really don't want to be out in the rain and my knee and everything so I'm kind of like scared slash aggravated and the wind just keeps getting heavier and heavier you just get this not so good feeling in your stomach obviously we just keep walking and things start to go from scary to terrifying basically the wind picked up so much that trees started falling. I remember seeing just like one, it's one of those skinny trees, but it was a tree falling nonetheless. So that tells you how windy it was. You could hear the wind, but it was, it was more than wind. Debris started actually flying around the air. I remember Becca and I not being able to see each other for a few moments. It was probably only like 30 seconds, but it felt like five minutes. You know when you're scared and you just want it to stop, everything feels like it is lasting so much longer than it actually is. We ended up gathering our bearings and finding each other. It was just like there was so much dust, debris, leaves, Everything was all up in the air that it got in our eyes. And that's when I was terrified, absolutely terrified. Those small trees turned into large trees falling and it wasn't, oh, one here and five minutes later, there's another one. It was boom, boom, boom. And I was just, 
out of my mind. And I remember being beside this car and there was a huge tree. I mean, it would take me and Becca both with both of our arms trying to go around this tree. It probably wouldn't have been enough to even have our hands meet. We made our way from being beside this car across from the huge tree and across the road there. So it was like a road, like, you know, one way and then across this way. As soon as we made it across the road, that tree fell on that car, would have squished us. That car was so flattened that the tires popped. I believe that is when I started to cry. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. I don't, I can't move fast enough. And that, that was the most terrifying part for me was that I couldn't move away. I couldn't run. I couldn't do anything. I don't know the people in this neighborhood that we were in. I only knew who I was staying with and who was taking care of me. Like I said, I call her my mama. She's not my real mom. She just really helped me out. My mom did not live in South Carolina at the time. So I didn't know anybody, but I see this house. It's There's a lot of houses in the neighborhood, but we are right in front of a house that's up this slight little hill. And we decide we are going to climb this little hill. And I say climb just because I, you know, my knee, you could walk up it easily, but I couldn't. <laughs> we make it up that little hill to the house and this woman opens the door. She is shocked. She's like, why are you guys out here? Well, you know, we didn't walk out in the middle of the storm. We didn't start explaining until we were inside and she turned on the news. And of course we had a tornado warning. I could hear the thing. It was so loud at this point that I knew immediately there was a tornado and the news just validated that. This amazing woman shelters us through the whole thing. When it's all over, I'm trying to call my mama. She's not answering the phone. I don't remember if the lines were out or if she just wasn't answering it, but either way, I could not get a hold of her. So when it's all said and done, the woman drives me and Becca back to where I was staying. The very first thing I see is a tree through a house, two houses down from where I was staying. I remember feeling so bad for them. It, it's, it's just a surreal feeling. I was very grateful that nothing happened to my mama's house. She didn't really have any large trees like that right where she was, but it was still, I just felt so bad seeing that. My mama finally calls me back. And you know, her first thing is like, why are you walking around in a storm? Like it wasn't anticipated, I swear. <laughs> I thought the storm was going to be hours later. It just came and popped up on us early. I'm sure she could hear the fear in my voice as I was telling her the story, but I think she thought that I was kind of exaggerating it a little bit. I mean, we all are pretty guilty of that every once in a while, but I wasn't exaggerating. Where she worked is like, I don't know, a few cities over or one, I don't know, it was like a 30 minute drive. And I don't think she was like watching the news or anything as this was going on. So this was a complete shock to her. She comes home and she sees everything. And I, she goes for a little drive around the neighborhood. Of course, you can't make it all the way around the neighborhood. And she sees the tree where I was standing, where we were standing beside that car. And I was like, I was right there. I was right there a few seconds before that tree went down. And I think that is when it hit her. <laughs> she was like, what? You were out in this? And I think I thought that was funny. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> I don't know what, I already told you this is what it was. And I, it just did not quite hit her until she saw, you know, some huge trees toppled over and, you know, debris everywhere. So obviously I wasn't like, in the middle of the tornado, but I was in a scary enough situation and close enough to wherever this tornado was. I did not see it. I could hear it, but it was still one of the most scary experiences that I have ever personally experienced. Becca and I still randomly <laughs> will <laughs> bring that up and talk about it and just like, geez, I can't believe that happened. I was like, it's because you're around me. <laughs> Weird stuff happens to me. Like, this is my life. You would think that all the things that have happened to me were made up. And I would not 
blame anybody <laughs> for thinking that with how many times I've had surgery, how many times I injure myself, everything that happens, it's just like, really? Are we still doing this? <laughs> Now, I'm obviously not finished getting ready, so maybe I will tell you guys one more story and kind of shorten it down a little bit. And this will be for the people that don't know because I feel like this happened around maybe less than less than or right at 10,000 subscribers I feel like I had. So it was a while ago. It was two years ago. Shoot, I've been doing YouTube for almost three years. It'll be three years in two months. So for anybody who doesn't know, I do ride a motorcycle. Right now I ride a Harley Softail Slim S. I love my bike, but I'm considering getting like a Ducati Monster R. Just because of all my surgeries, I don't feel like I can necessarily handle the bike as well as I need to. I can ride it just fine, but handle it. Meaning, you know, if I am getting in a situation where I need to move the bike, if I'm in gravel or something, it's so heavy, I can't do it. But I love the bike. I kind of want to keep that and have a Ducati, but <laughs> that's not really an option for me. Anywho, at the time of this accident, I was riding a Harley 40, um, 48. Yeah, 48. It's a Sportster. It's a 1200. I love that bike. That was my first bike and I hadn't been riding that long and I also had not taken my class yet. For anybody who wants to start riding, I would definitely suggest taking the Harley class. You will learn so much. On this particular day, Puffin and I had dropped off the kids. We were going to have a free weekend to ourselves, and we wanted to take the bikes out to Taco Bell. <laughs> we have a Taco Bell in our city, but really it was just about the ride. If you're a rider, you know that sometimes you will go further just because you want to ride and enjoy the day. I had all my gear on, except for one thing that I am very particular about now, I was wearing jeans. I do not wear jeans anymore. I learned my lesson and I learned it the hard way. We are in a 55 mile an hour zone. I live in a lake town. So this happened less than a mile away from where I live. And it's curvy roads back there. It's all just curves. And you go down through the, like right down to the lake and then you go up. Well, I hadn't made it down yet. <laughs> and I was going around a curve. And in the middle of the curve, it had just been a super rainy week and someone had cut their grass. Grass was in the middle of the road and it wasn't even like, you know, a little short grass. It was long pieces of grass. They had taken a long time to cut theirs and they blew it in the road. What happens to motorcycles? and any debris like that, especially grass in the middle of the road in a curve where you're already leaning, you go down. Puffin was behind me when this happened, so I was on my bike, he was on his, he saw it happen, he turned around. I remember thinking like everything was happening so fast, but it was quiet almost, and it was sky ground, sky ground, sky ground, because I was just was like tumbling. I landed in the middle of the road. I had enough sense to immediately, as soon as I stopped, get out of the middle of the road, I scooted over to the edge, and I remember <laughs> screaming profanities about my bike. <laughs> I was like, my effing bike, da, da, da. Like, I was livid. I couldn't feel anything at that point. I felt nothing. And there were these strangers on the side, like there was a building over there and they came running and they were freaking out. They're like, are you okay? Are you okay? Da, 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 da. I was like, I'm fine. My bike. And I was standing up and they kept telling me I needed to sit down. I didn't understand why. Like, why do I need to sit down? I'm fine. They're like, you're not fine. I was like, yes, I am. I was arguing and I was arguing until the ambulance came and the ambulance, uh, I guess the paramedic, not the ambulance people, the paramedics were like, ma'am, ma'am ma'am i remember them saying ma'am over and over and i was just like what <laughs> and they were like you need to sit down i'm like i'm fine i can walk home you have a hole in your knee no i don't i look down see the hole in my knee and immediately feel everything absolutely everything my back i can feel the road rash i had i can feel the hole in my knee i can feel that and something is not right in my knee. My uh, tendons had stretched, so like my kneecap wasn't right where it was supposed to be. That wasn't fun. So I had to go in the ambulance. They had to take me to the hospital, and then I had to be life flighted from there. And it wasn't like a life-threatening situation. I remember being in shock and shaking and being in so much pain. But it was because of my knee. I had to be flown to Nashville so that some specialists could see me. 
I feel like I need to be face to face with my mirror in order to do my mascara. Otherwise, it never turns out the way I want it to. I was trying to show you guys on camera because some people have been like, how do you do your mascara? But really, I'm like this all the way up and then I go back and forth and it's very focused. So <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but anyway, the ending of the motorcycle story, basically for three days straight, I was so swollen. Like internally, I was swollen and bruised. Puff, Puffin had to pick me up to go to the bathroom. I got an infection in the hole because it went all the way down to the bone. They did clean it out at the hospital, but they sewed it up. And as soon as those stitches came out, it was green. <laughs> and it, the whole wound stayed infected. I was like three rounds of antibiotics. And then I did have to have surgery, of course. <laughs> it took me a long time to even be able to talk about that. I It was the most traumatic experience and the most pain I've ever been in in my entire life. So I don't suggest motorcycle wrecks to anyone, but I got back on my bike as soon as I possibly could and riding. I don't think there's really anything that's ever going to stop me from riding. But anywho, that is it for my story times. <laughs> I found it kind of difficult to do my makeup and talk and it not be about what I'm doing. But if you guys like this style of video, I don't think it's going to be like every month on my channel. But if you like me to do it every once in a while, just let me know down below. And I'll see you guys in my next video.